Hello my dear children, welcome back to the lecture series of Maharashtra Board Grade 12 Chemistry. The name of the topic is Alcohol, Phenols and Ethers. My name is Arpita Banerjee and you are watching Arpita classes. In this series, we have already completed two compounds that is alcohol and phenols. Today, in this video, we are going to start with ethers. So, let's get started. Ethers are what type of compounds? First of all, we need to see them. So, ethers are the compounds where oxygen atom is bonded with either two alkyl atoms of the same type or maybe it is bonded with two different alkyl groups okay or it may be bonded with one alkyl and one aryl group or maybe oxygen is bonded with both aryl groups this type of compounds are known as ethers okay let us study ethers are the compounds in which one oxygen is bonded to two alkyl or one alkyl and one aryl or two aryl groups okay Ethers are also considered to be anhydrides of alcohols. So, ethers are known as anhydrides of alcohols. Why? Because the uh, uh, dehydration of ethers give rise to alcohol. For example, if I write it, suppose if I if I take one particular example, uh, C2H5OH. This is my ethanol. Another molecule of C2H5OH, okay, C2H5OH. So I took two molecules of ethanol and if I remove water from here, OH and H, water from here, so okay, so remove water from here minus H2O and combine the entire thing, you get C2H5OC2H5, which is an ether. And therefore ethers are known as anhydrides of alcohols okay i hope everything is clear till here ethers are the compounds where oxygen is bonded to either two alkyl groups or one alkyl one aryl groups the alkyl groups can be same or different depending on that we can classify ethers or the oxygen atom is bonded to two aryl groups they are also called as anhydrides of alcohols example is ch3och3 this compound is called as di methyl ether we are talking about the common name okay this is dry ethyl method this compound is we can see here one side ethyl group is attached and other side methyl group is attached so this compound is called as ethyl methyl ether okay ethyl methyl ether understood so this is our ether now come to the next topic that is classification of ether now, as I told you that, whether the alkyl groups are same or different, on both sides of oxygen atom, the alkyl groups which are attached, if they are same, then we call it as symmetrical ether or simple ether, okay? So, the ether in which both alkyl or aryl groups, it might be aryl groups also, it can be like this, A-R-O-A-R, if they are same, then we call it as symmetrical or simple ether, for example, CSC, OCSC which is also called as dimethyl ether just in the previous slide only i wrote it dimethyl ether and uh, c2h5o c2h5 is called as diethyl ether okay so these are simple ethers or symmetrical ethers on the other hand if the alkyl groups are different r o r dashed if it is like this or it is uh, maybe r O A R. One is alkyl group and the other one is aryl group. Then we call it as mixed ether or unsymmetrical ether. So the ether in which both alkyl or aryl groups are attached to the oxygen are different. They are called as unsymmetrical or mixed ether. The example is this one, which is called as ethyl. We can see here one side ethyl group is attached and the other side methyl group is attached. So it is called as ethyl methyl ether. Okay. So this is the classification of. So the next topic is nomenclature of the ether. In nomenclature of ether, we do uh, two nomenclature. One is the common name or the trivial name, and the other one is the IUPAC name. So in IUPAC name of ether, it is uh, named as alkoxy alkene. It is alkoxy alkene. In the alkene part, the long chain carbon come. 
long chain carbon comes under the alkene part and alkoxy contains a short chain carbon okay so if i see here there are two uh, both the alkyl groups are made up of only one carbon atom that is methyl group both of them are methyl group so one of the methyl group will come under alkoxy so if i take this as alkoxy then this methyl group will be considered as alkene so alkoxy means it's one carbon atoms alkoxy which is called as methoxy so the name will be methoxy and the alkene is also made up of one carbon atom so that is methane so the name of this is this ether is methoxy methane and the common name we have written many times that is di methyl ether okay di methyl ether come to the next one this is the short chain carbon carbon one carbon atom and there are two carbon atoms here so this part will come under alkene okay and this part will come under alkoxy so again alkoxy of one carbon atom which is your methoxy and under the alkene it will be ethane so it is methoxy ethane and the common name will be ethyl methyl ether there are two different alkyl groups one is ethyl group the other one is methyl group and ether so ethyl methyl ether is the common name come under uh, come to the next question that is this is c2h5 ethyl group this is also c2h5 ethyl group so the common name will be di ethyl ether and in the iupac name one part will be alkoxy one part will be alkene so alkoxy of two carbon atom will be named as ethoxy and in the alkene part it will be ethane so it is ethoxy ethane here this is one carbon atom so this part will come under alkoxy and this part will come under alkene so it is in the common name we'll call it as methyl and this is n propyl straight chain propyl so it is n propyl ether so this is methyl n propyl ether and iupac name will be methoxy propane methoxy methoxy propane this is the iupac name now for the next one this is methyl group and this is benzene ring that is phenyl group so commonly we call it as methyl methyl phenyl ether common name is methyl phenyl ether and in the iupac name it will be uh, methoxy and then this is benzene so it is called as methoxy methoxy and then benzene okay next compound is cac ch2 is your ethyl group and this is phenyl group so one side it is ethyl one side it is phenyl so the common name will be ethyl phenyl ether and the iupac will be ethoxy benzene it is ethoxy benzene ethoxy benzene next is this side it is n propyl group and this side it is phenyl group so it will be uh, n propyl and phenyl okay now phenyl and n propyl which one will be coming first phenyl this is and this is propyl so we can see that both starts with p but then h comes before so phenyl will come before so we can write down phenyl and then n propyl ether iupac would be propoxy benzene propoxy benzene so this is the iupac name of this compound okay so after the nomenclature of ether we come to the preparation part of ether in preparation the first is from alcohol the first preparation is from alcohol by dehydration the meaning of dehydration is d means no hydro means water no water that means removal of water we already have seen that ethers are called as anhydrides of alcohols that means when you remove water from alcohols you get ethers okay so the reaction is 
two molecules of ethanol we have taken and concentrated H2SO4 is a dehydrating agent. The temperature need to be maintained at 413 Kelvin. This is very, very important. We get the product is C2H5O, C2H5 plus H2O. So we get diethyl ether. I already showed you how this is coming in the previous slide. Okay, so we get ethanol. Ethanol is treated with concentrated H2SO4 at 413 Kelvin, we get diethyl ether as a product. Now, how this reaction happens, we will see the experimental procedure. So, in the first step, you know, this H2O will be coming out. C2H5O is that is one molecule of ethanol. One molecule of ethanol will be reacting with concentrated H2SO4 and removal of water will take place and we get C2H5 dot HSO4 plus H2O. Just take out one molecule of water and join the rest of the parts. So you get C2H5 dot HSO4 plus C2H2O. Now this C2H5 dot HSO4 again will be reacting with another molecule of ethanol. This is another molecule of ethanol and again this H2SO4 will be coming out. This is H2SO4 and rest of the part you just join it. So from here H2SO4 is coming out. So you get C2H5 O C two H five plus H two S O four. You are getting back as it is. This is called as diethyl ether. Here, maintaining the temperature is very important because if you do not maintain the temperature um, at four thirteen Kelvin, and if the temperature rises um, about four forty three Kelvin, then the product is alkene. Remember, okay? So maintaining the temperature is very important. Here, limitation is only one degree alcohol is applicable for this reaction. 2 degree and 3 degree alcohols will show elimination reaction. Okay, so only 1 degree alcohol will be our substrate for this particular reaction. Okay, another thing you can see with which I was telling you that C2H5 oil, this is your ethanol. If you maintain the temperature at 413 Kelvin in presence of concentrated H2SO4, you are getting diethyl ether. So our product is ether in this case. But if you do not maintain the temperature and the temperature rises till 443 Kelvin, the product is ethene that we get a get an alkene over here. Okay. So only simple ether can be prepared easily by this method. Another limitation is only simple ether can be prepared. So three limitations are there for this reaction. The first limitation is only one degree alcohol is applicable for this particular reaction. Two degree and three degree will give you will show you elimination reaction. Second is we have to maintain the temperature. If the temperature rises than 413 Kelvin, then we get alkene instead of ether. And third one is only simple ether can be uh, produced by this method. Okay. Next method is Williamson synthesis reaction, which is very 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 important. It's a name reaction. So in Williamson synthesis reaction, the substrate is an alkyl halide. Uh, more specifically, it is a primary alkyl halide which is treated with sodium alkoxide, okay? So this is my alkyl halide, Rx is my alkyl halide. We will specifically take primary alkyl halide and that is treated with sodium alkoxide. This is sodium alkoxide, NaOr is called as sodium alkoxide, okay? So what happens is NaX comes out from here. This is your NaX which is coming out from here and you get the remaining product gets joined up. So you get ROR which is your ether plus NaX is the byproduct. This is my ether. Okay, so this is the reaction, Williamson synthesis reaction. So I have taken an example. This is methyl bromide. This is methyl bromide which is treated with it, uh, sodium ethoxide. C2H5ONA is sodium ethoxide. So you are heating it. NaBr is coming out from here. Rest of the things you join together. So it is CH3O, C2H5, and the byproduct is NaBr. So this is your ethyl, ethyl, methyl, ether. Okay. So in this particular reaction, we need to remember our. Um, uh, this thing is the uh, substrate is specifically primary halide. Okay, if it is secondary halide, then we get uh, basically we get a um, this thing um, alkene instead of ether we get a get an alkene because in that case sodium ethoxide will be acting as a base. 
So these are the two preparations for ether. In our next video, I'll be starting with the physical properties and chemical properties of ether and this chapter will get over. Thank you so much. If you find these videos are beneficial for you, please subscribe the channel and press the like button. Thank you. Stay tuned.